In trolling situations like this, where you're lucky enough to run a, a number of boards, we're in Michigan, so you can run three lines per person, actually. But what we're doing, with Dave and I, we're actually running six planer boards, something pretty standard. A lot of people have done it before. But if you haven't, and especially in rough conditions, when you're making turns, when you're dealing with waves, you can get boards that jump over lines. You can have a big mess in the boat. So there's a few things that you can do to make fishing a lot easier on you. Now we're using big baits today in shallow water, so the leads are short, but what you wanna do is actually inside the boat, from the back of the boat to the front, make sure your rods go low to high, okay? You can see the rod holders here, we're running three on each side in the back, the first one's lower, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Where you're gonna have problems is from that rod tip to the board, those lines are gonna jump across the other boards in turns and in rough conditions. So a simple tool like that will make it a lot easier on you. And as far as fishing a lot of lines, if you have more people in the boat, the more the merrier. You can get a great spread, you can cover a lot of water, and you can catch more fish. I should be able to go around this middle one. Yeah, I think so. Yep. There's enough weight on that one, you can take it right behind. That feels like a decent one. It looks like a pretty good one. It just laid that board back. It's got it nice and nice and vertical. That's usually a good thing. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got weight to him. I'm gonna get this board and get the net as quick as I can. Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> it feels decent. Yeah, he's got it down. Oh man, I gotta get <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a good one, Dave. Oh, there he is, Dave. Yep. Oh, it's a nice walleye. It's a nice one. There we go. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nothing like I taught you. Good fish. <laughs> Look at how fat this one is. Wow. It's more gold. Pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's getting ready to spawn. <laughs> Staging for it. Oh, man. I'm going to need the pliers here for sure. Cause, uh, okay. Two trebles. You aren't going to lose this one. <laughs> I planned it that way. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on. How fat. Yeah, just a beast. I mean, you know, not the longest one in the world here, Dave, but get a nice girthy one. <laughs> That's got my gut. <laughs> That's a Dave Atkinson fish right there. <laughs> well, let's get this one back. But you know, when I was taking the board off, I could tell it was heavy. You know, it had nice big girth coming in, felt nice, and okay, we'll take that I one. I think she's gonna lay a lot of eggs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> information from real fishing experts presented by Amsoil. The last few years I've done quite a few tips on jigging and in the past I've talked about using instead of using live bait minnows and night crawlers with your jigs going with two and a half and three inch Berkeley gulp tails and the reasons for you doing that are, are pretty simple you can make a lot longer casts you can cast real hard you don't have to worry about the minnows and the crawlers coming off and you can actually use a technique I like to call it power fishing okay it's, you can go down a riprap shoreline like this real quickly with long casts out in front of the boat cover water fast find the fish so using straight tails has been a really, really effective way for me to catch fish. But what we're gonna do today is explain kind of like the next step in jigging. And it's going from power fishing one with the straight tails to power fishing two with action tails. Whenever I find a school of fish right now, and if I'm catching them on straight tails, I'm going to go and, and try action tails. One of my favorites actually in the last two years, in the last year in, in particular, has been this little Berkeley gulp product. But you can see the deep ribs. And this is called a pulse worm, okay? It's about three inches long. If you breathe on this, it moves in the water. And so I can fish this very fast and aggressively. It has a ton of action. In the last two years in particular, these little ripple shads, these three inch ripple shads, again, power bait, Berkeley power bait, have a rib division in here, which gives them a lot of action and a very thin section before the paddle. So we're using this more and more and more. And this is kind of a cool bait because as you jig it, you can feel the vibration, almost like a crankbait. So I'll throw those two offerings to the fish to see if I get more bites. And that's the purpose of doing this, is to try to push the envelope, push that envelope, fish a little faster, show them something a little bit different because on any given day, they may want an action tail. 
And for you river fishermen, and for the, all the people that wanted this to come out for river fishing, Berkeley's just introduced their new rib worm. It's a four inch version, very, very soft and limber. That four inches gives you a lot of flexibility in the tail. The Mississippi River guys, the Missouri River guys have been smashing walleyes on tails like this. And actually, I've been using them a lot on weed lines and getting very, very good results. So action tails are like the second tier in power jigging. You're gonna wanna try them. I usually wait until I've caught a few fish on straight tails, like I said before, then go to the action tails and you'll find that, man, some days you will really catch a lot more fish.